Hey guys, how you going? This is Kev Ryan, and today we're going to be doing a bat rep for Infinity. Today I'll be playing Corregidor against Leah Maris, who will be playing Druze, and our mission is Supplies. And just to give you a heads up, the game actually ends uh, after turn two. Turn two was a real blowout for both of us, but there are still some lessons that are worth learning, and the commentary is still kind of interesting, so I'll go ahead and go through it. This bat rep is very much going to follow in the Vol SC style of things, but instead of taking pictures with my camera, I'm actually taking screenshots from Tabletop Simulator. I think that that format of Battle Report is something that we're missing a lot of on the YouTube because of all the stream games that are out there. So this is an experiment to see if this style of Battle Report is interesting. With that in mind, let's go ahead and get started. So we made the die roll, and Leah Maris playing Druze won, and he decided to go first. Uh, I took a look at the table and decided that I liked the uh, blue deployment zone, which is the far one on the opposite side of the table that we're looking at. So if we're just kind of going to look at the uh, the deployment zone, my, you know, is about right here. Uh, my deployment zone is right here and one thing that is sort of worth noting on this particular map is that there's a long fire lane let me go ahead and get a different color there's a long fire lane you know right along here and it so it's this building right here and this building right here the buildings can't see each other but you can see the floor of one from the other so this was the long range gunfight that both of our arrow pieces had set up for um so if we look at this from my perspective, this is uh, my side of the deployment zone, and uh, you, let's use the same color. Um, this is my view on that long lane, and, and then his, his team was sort of set up over there. Let's go ahead and zoom in on his team over here. Uh, he has a Brawler Heavy Rocket Launcher, a Druze Regular Hacker, a Bounty Hunter with the SMG and Acrylot Cannon. This is a Brawler Doctor. This is a regular Brawler, and actually it will turn out to be his lieutenant, although I didn't know that at deployment. And this is the famous Druze with the EM grenades, and this is a Clipper drone bot, missile launcher bot. Armand is over here. This was his reserve piece, so I didn't have that knowledge of that he was going to be there at deployment. Um, and when he formed the team, I think he left the Doctor and the Clipper out. And I think his thinking was that he was going to use the hacker to target me, and then he was going to rain missiles on my head, and he didn't want the whole team activating while the missiles were getting rained down on my head. Uh, over here is his Harris. That's actually in another group. He has a uh, bounty hunter over here, a Druze killer hacker right here, and a brawler right here. Uh, that's another lieutenant option. And they're on the left-hand side of the table. His reserve piece, as I already mentioned, was Armand. Uh, he put him right there uh, in order to climb on top of this building. He was going to climb up here, and once he's up here, he's going to have line of fire down in that direction, which will see my link team, and he's hoping to be able to start taking shots in that fashion. This is my deployment. Uh, I have my core over here, uh, I'm using 3D models, so let me explain what's there. This is the Vostok FTO, a uh, very good profile, I like that guy a lot. This is the Boarding Shotgun Evader Engineer to fix the Vostok. We have a Dactari, we have Senior Massacre with a Breaker Combi Rifle, and then standing up watching this long, long lane is a Mobile Brigada with a Missile Launcher. Um, also featured here is Jazz. Jazz is in the other group, and I put her there because I was thinking that Leo Maris, you know, the Druze player, he's got the pitchers, he's going to shoot pitchers on my team. I'll stop that by having Jazz there so that she can counter hack. Uh, this turned out to be a stupid thing to do. She just gets her brain fried, uh, but we all make mistakes. Uh, over here on the left hand side, you have the Evo hacker who's going to hack buff my bot, uh, my Vostok. Uh, one of my lieutenant options, this is an Aguacil. And then um, over here is the Harris. We'll look at them in a second. So here is a picture of the fire lane that the missile launcher can see. You can see down in this direction. And then Armand is going to end up up here, and that's where we're going to have that gunfight. Over here we have the rest of my deployment of the main group. We have a Harris over here of a Evader AP Spitfire Engineer. Very good profile. 
a Jaguar to throw a smoke, and a Dactari to fix everybody. And then on the other side of my deployment, I have uh, Billy, I have uh, my other lieutenant option, another Aguasil, and um, I have a Moran right there. She's actually standing up because at this point in my deployment, I know that there is a drop trooper that may be coming because of the model count that Liam Iris has shown off. This is just a little bit more of a picture of what I'm trying to see. We had talked about it beforehand and we had agreed that there was no way that anything could come in off the table on this side, so this was the stretch. But I was a little bit worried about that some bashy bazook was going to show up and kill Billy or go kill my lieutenant option or, or generally cause havoc like that. Uh, so we've already talked about his withheld piece. It was Armand right here. Uh, I withheld a Moran, and I put down my Moran right here in order to attempt to stop Armand from causing problems. Uh, I haven't talked about these camel markers yet. Let's go ahead and do that now. Uh, these are both Hunzakuts, uh, forward observers, they're Druze, and then over here we have his Peacemaker bot. I'll try to get a better picture of that in a second. Yeah, here we go. So this is a better picture of the full deployment. You have the uh, Peacemaker is over here. You have uh, Hunzika there, Hunzika there, reserved Moran, uh, sorry, reserved Armand. We have his core over here, Clipper right there, uh, his Harris is over there, and the random doctor is right there. And of course, this is supplies, so the supply boxes are there, there, and there. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. I spent a command token to strip two orders off of group two. My thinking is that that'll restrict his ability to drop pictures. And then he goes ahead and starts his turn. The first thing that he tries to do is he tries to take uh, Armand and walk him up the ladder here and getting to this position so that he can have a gunfight with my mobile regatta missile launcher um, at that position. Now, this is kind of a dubious proposition in my mind, but it's a practice game. So we're trying to see how these things work out. The reason I'm skeptical is because of a question of burst. He is ballistic scale 13. I'm ballistic scale 10, but we are both burst 2. He is favored in this engagement, but, you know, I got a missile launcher, and he might get unlucky. And uh, here's another line of that shot. His first order, he comes up, and I think it bounces off the armor. Um, but his second order, he moves closer. Um, he discovers that he is within repeater range of my Moran, which isn't great for him. And then he loses the gunfight with the Mobile Brigada missile launcher. He fails two of the three armor saves, which isn't that unlikely, against a missile launcher, and he goes unconscious. So that was the outcome that we had feared because of the, you know, just the, the way the luck can kind of suss out with burst two versus burst two, and it did not go his way. But this is a practice game, so let's see what happens next. He activates his core-linked X-Visor Drew's hacker and just dumps a repeater right at Jazz's feet. I, for some reason, thought that putting Jazz there would deter this outcome, but it doesn't. He just activates his Drew's killer hacker and fries Jazz's brains, and that's the story of her. After that, he doesn't have that many orders left in Group 1, so instead of trying to target my troops and then missile launch them, he instead goes for isolations. And he ends up isolating the Engineer and the Vostok and the Mobile Brigada, which is, which is actually a little annoying. Uh, after that, not much happens. Um, he uh, brings on his Bashi Bazook, which I think this is the real one right here, although I didn't know uh, that at the time. This guy is guarding the flank. And then I think the only other thing he does is he takes a Hansakut and he grabs a supply box and runs back into the watchful gaze of the brawler heavy rocket launcher, which got moved up when the hacking was taking place. Okay, so now it is my turn, and I've got a couple of things that I need to do. The first and foremost is I my, my core link has been isolated. Everybody's been kicked out. I try to have the engineer repair himself. He's on a 13. It does not succeed. I try to have the Mobile Brigada repair uh, himself with a reset. He fails, and the Vostok tries to reset and also fails. Okay, no big deal. I mean, this is annoying, but it, they're not dead. Maybe they'll come into play later. But it does mean that my primary tool for dealing with this brawler heavy rocket launcher is not going to work. So what I do is I take that Moran that was near Armand, 
and I walk him out to this position um, along this way first and then up here and I drop a koala at his feet right there and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come around the corner uh, like this I am going to see his brawler I'm going to shoot his brawler and then the koala is going to go off and if he doesn't dodge then he is going to eat an unopposed koala and what ends up happening is he decides to shoot at me thus eating the unopposed koala shot he actually wins the face-to-face -face. uh that's a little bit unlucky he's burst two on zeros but he has the core link but i have mimetism so i think he's burst two on nines and i am burst three on twelves but it's not that unlikely that uh i'm gonna lose and you know i took out Mer uh, Armand over here in a similar situation, so I can't really complain. Um, my Moran gets killed by the loss of the face-to-face, -face, but he eats an unopposed koala, and that kills the brawler. That opens up the left-hand side, so I go ahead and I activate my Harris, and I walk out uh, to start seeing what's going on over here. And the first thing I do is I uh, get my, um, my evader with the Spitfire out, and I, I see this bashy bazook and i go ahead and take a shot at him i just had half a movement left uh at this stage i couldn't keep going forward without you know seeing line of fire so it really was complete luck that i chose the right one but i do choose the right one and i take it out uh after that we go and see what the meat of my approach was i use climbing plus on the evader to climb up this building and what this lets me do is it lets me get eyes on his whole link team um, he has a brawler right there, uh, he has a uh, bounty hunter right here, he has a brawler doctor right there, his uh, brawler heavy rocket launcher had been right there, but remember I killed it, his brawler hacker is also right there, and then off in the distance we also have his Harris over here, and I've got probably four or something orders left by the time I get here, so I, I'm in a pretty good position to start doing some damage. Um, if memory serves, I actually don't get super lucky in the attack. The Druze uh, hacker manages to survive and fell guts into total cover right here on this building. I will never be able to see him, you know, ever again for the rest of this game because of how this building is constructed. Even if I get right next to it, there's just no way to look down. The lip is too strong. So that that uh, that hacker was getting shot, didn't have cover, and uh, you know the the dice just worked out that way. Um, he managed to tank all his armor saves. Uh, I then have a shot over here. I kill this brawler. That is kind of nice. Um, and I fail to kill this bounty hunter. Also, I, I am slicing um, as carefully as I can, but the dice are just not quite with me so far. There is, however, a little bit diff different sort of luck going on here. The one brawler that I do manage to kill turns out to be his lieutenant, which turns out to be super useful. And while I am getting unlucky here, in a second, my luck will change, and so it is going to balance out. I've only got a couple of orders left in group two at this stage. Um, so what I end up doing is I end up moving out with my Moran. Um, it looks like the Peacemaker is unconscious here. If memory serves, I had a long range line of fire to shoot at that guy. I didn't really hit that much with my shots, but he failed his dodge, which triggered a Koala and thus endeth the Peacemaker. So that was earlier. The last thing that I do is I basically take my second moran over here i just move it to this position i go prone so i'm a little bit more safe there's a supply box like right here you can't really see it so i want to keep my specialist safe but i do want to put a koala right there just to be a little bit extra annoying to his harris and this is sort of the state of things at the end of the turn i have put um armand unconscious i have killed his brawler heavy rocket launcher i've killed his brawler uh, what turned out to be his lieutenant, I've killed his Bashi Bazook, and I have uh, put uh, the Peacemaker unconscious. So not a lot of damage, but some damage, and you have to remember that at this stage, I have suffered virtually no casualties. I've got some isolations, and so things are looking pretty strong for me. And But if he can bounce back, you know, he's still in the game. Uh, as I said, though, when I took the shot over here and killed the brawler that was here, that was his lieutenant. So he's an awesome lieutenant, and he is hurting as a result. The first thing he does is he takes his Hunzakut, who had been right here, who was carrying the supply box, moves it to this corner, and drops down a repeater. He is thinking that he's going to hack my evader. Uh, probably target it, and then drop some missiles on my head. 
This is a little bit harder than you'd expect because my evader has a tin bot and I am resetting on a 13. But, uh, you know, if he pulls it off, then that's one problem solved. And this evader really has some pretty commanding arrow potential right here. Uh, but it does not work out. He ends up spending all of his regular orders and a couple of his command tokens trying in vain to hack my evader, who's just resetting the whole time. Uh, he then says, okay, well, I really got to deal with this evader or else that evader's going to wipe the board with me in a second. He stands up his clipper here, uh, takes some shots and, uh, and, and misses. Uh, later on, he is going to um, move. There's a Druze over here with an EM grenade launcher that's going to come out and take some shots. He has his Harris over here that's also going to take some shots. He's got this guy right here who's going to take some shots. He's really just going to throw everything he can at this evader. But it really does not work out. Uh, this is a midway pick. Uh, I end up dodging my evader close to Armand. Just in case he tries to guided missile me later on, uh, then he, he won't be able to because the, the splash would hit his friend. It actually turns out to just be not necessary, though. This is a board state at the end of his turn, and let's just highlight some of the things that are missing. This uh, bounty hunter tried to take me on with his Acrylat Canon and died. Uh, there was a bounty hunter here that tried to take me on with his Acrylat Canon and died. This guy lost the face-to-face, -face, the Druze with the EM grenade launcher, but he managed to tank his armor saves. Uh, this guy failed to hack, this guy failed to shoot me, and uh, th th I think this guy's order was used to try to fuel the, the hacking, which just did not work. And the, the broad takeaway here is that it ends up being a uh, more costly turn for him than for me. I managed to kill two things in a row, um, which I had failed to kill in my active turn. Now, no single one of these outcomes was particularly favored for Drews. Uh, a lot of the time he was burst one versus burst two, or he was in my good range and not his good range. But the simple fact is, is that if any single one of these uh, face-to-faces had gone poorly for me, uh, you know, that would have been a very different game state, and, and he shouldn't have failed all of them. In retrospect, though, the thing that we realized that he should have done is he should have taken this Hunzakut and walked around this corner here and then shot at the rest of my team uh, that was over there, thus cutting the legs out from the evader. So that's his turn two. Uh, my turn two then begins. I try once again to reset with the Vostok and fail. I try to reset with the Mobregata and fail. And at this point, I'm thinking, I gotta get my, my Vostok into play or else this is dumb. So I take my Engineer and I go to repair the Vostok because I know that I can use command tokens to re-roll. And I don't remember if I get it on my first try, but I do succeed at that. So I reform the link with the Vostok, with Senior Massacre, and with the Doctari, and I start moving out with the Vostok. Uh, the Vostok hustles forward. The first thing he does is draw a bead on the Hunzakut that has the supply box and kills him. The next thing that the Vostok does is he goes after the Hunzakut that was in the middle uh, of the board that was deployed in marker state here. Um, that works out uh, badly, actually. I think I lose the face-to-face -face or something. He dodges successfully. But he dodges into a standing position or something like that. And I'm able to take my Moran from group two and get eyes on the Hunzakut there and take out the Hunzakut. Anyway, at this point, I uh, move my Vostok onto this building. It has a pretty commanding line of fire. I want to take out his clipper. I want to get arrow positions to shut down his Harris. I actually don't want to put him into retreat at this point because I haven't picked up any boxes. But Drews are so expensive, and um, you know, he, he, you know, 75 points isn't that many that I'm able to do this. In any event, that pretty much sums up my turn. I think my Vostok did get isolated in ARO or something, but it's still sitting there with a very commanding view of everything, and the Druze player, Lemaris, just doesn't have all that much left. I still have my Evader looking down at everything, and I think this is what he has left at the start of his third turn. He has uh, the Druze Killer Hacker, Druze Regular Hacker, um, and... Uh, and he's got this doctor over here, and it looks like that's pretty much it. And we decide at that point that we're probably going to call the game here rather than play out this, this third turn, which is so clearly going to favor me. And that pretty much sums up the game. So I think if I'm going to give a little bit of a postmortem here, there's a couple of lessons that we learned early on that are worth remarking. 
Uh, one, my placement of jazz was dumb. Uh, if you want to defend against a killer hacker dropping a pitcher right next to you, I think you either really need just the, the best tin bot that you can possibly find combined with the best killer hacker around, or you need to have your killer hacker nearby the repeater to threaten to you know, fry those hackers after the dust is settled. Second lesson, which started a little bit earlier, is that Armand versus the missile launcher uh, Mobile Brigada is not a matchup that is particularly favorable to Armand. Yes, you're BS-13 versus BS-10, but it's burst two versus burst two, and when your opponent has a missile launcher, you only need to get unlucky once to really have a bad day. Um, after that, uh, I think what really it boiled down to was the ability of my Harris to make its way across the field and then essentially kill the brawler that happened to be the Drew's lieutenant. Um, if I hadn't killed his lieutenant, if he hadn't been in loss of lieutenant at the start of his second turn, there probably was a lot more that he could have done, uh, but the lieutenant was dead and he couldn't do those things. Anyway, that's the game. Um, bit of a blowout for Corregidor, but had the dice gone a little differently or had I not killed his lieutenant in the way that I did, I think the game actually uh, could have played out a little bit differently as well. Thanks for watching, and I hope to do another one of these soon.